Welcome to Talk Murder to Me. My name is John. I'm here with Jen and Nicole. This is episode 264. We're just going to get started right into it. It's Friday and just want to want to cover this story. I know I've been talking about it quite frequently. The bath salt zombie case in Florida. Tell me what you know about this case, Nicole. Um, I believe this is back in 2012. It was the the case made infamous because I feel like everyone remembers like where they were when they heard this story. Um, and I remember it being like someone running around the streets somewhere in Florida, gnawing on people's faces like a zombie. And it was because they were smoking bath salts. Florida has a huge problem with these synthetic drugs. Flocka being one. Mm. I, I I have a video here just so you can see some of the people high on Flocka. Oh, yeah. We what happened? Looked at one of these. Before. Look at this guy. I mean, you see, like, just completely see, fucked up. <laughs> no flock zone. What the hell is going on? Crazy. You got a huge problem with that shit. And what is Flocka again? Some kind of plant, I guess. I mean, Waka Flocka Flame. Mm. I don't know. Man. Flocka is some big ass synthetic word I can't pronounce. Synthetic stimulant of, I don't know, man. Cathy developed annoyed. in the 1960s. Designer drug. It's like. I thought designer drug is like cocaine. PVP. Also. No idea. Along with this flock of stuff, I kind of have a story. Yeah? It's not me doing flocka. Oh. But it is me doing this stuff called. Um, spice. Spice. Yeah. Spice is craziest shit I've ever smoked in my life. It's I would never smoke it again. But in the military, they don't test for it, or they didn't and when it came out. So we tried it, you know? And I remember me and my buddy were in Columbia, and with this one, we are living in Fort Bragg. We're, don't, we're down for the weekend. I had a place down there. And we were at this little middle school shooting uh, golf balls, like hitting golf balls out into the woods. Mm-hmm. And uh, like this nice town in South Carolina. And we smoked this stuff called Black Magic. It's a spice. Which is like the synthetic weed. Mm -hmm. They sell it as like aroma. A, like a potpourri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thing. But they know good and goddamn well people are smoking it. Right. You buy it at a head shop. What the fuck? Yeah. You, know? you buy potpourri at fucking Walmart. It's right. completely different. But anyway, we started hallucinating and having like a shared hallucination and we got really paranoid we thought something was chasing us and we're both of us were pretty big military dudes you know i mean and my buddy was six feet three like almost 300 pounds and he was like scared like a child hmm. i was too scared i don't know what was chasing us i was just super fucking paranoid hmm. crazy paranoid hmm. scary yeah, anyway, it's scary shit, man. But this isn't that video. This is, uh, no one knows what this guy was on or even if he was on anything at all. But go to talkmore.com because I'm putting this video up here. And while it's playing, while this video is playing, we're going to be reading the transcript of what happened from the victim. The victim of this story is still alive. I'll show you his pictures. We had all oh the pictures. Boy. All the pictures on talkmore.com. They're gr brutal as fuck, man. I mean, there's a. I got all these pictures. There's one picture where it's just the face that's detached from the head. Oh, no. Laying there. <laughs> I mean, all kinds of shit. I mean, this dude is mauled. Uh, 80, like the lady who was attacked by the monkey? Yeah, it looks a lot like that, actually. 80% of his face was eaten off. Ah. <laughs> 80%. And just like the last story, this one, the 
the zombie in this story actually dies. So they did an autopsy, full autopsy. He ate 80% of this guy's flesh off his face. They found no flesh in his stomach. Interesting. He didn't eat any of it. He just spit it all back out on the sidewalk. As people were walking by, which you're about to see, a lot of people just walking by saying, whoa, that's crazy shit right there. Anyway, so I'll put this on there. We're going to watch it and kind of comment on it. Oh, yeah, I probably should mention where we're going. This happened May 26, 2012 at MacArthur Causeway in Miami, Florida. All right, so we're going to be reading what actually happened from the victim when he was interviewed after this. So a little bit about this guy. His name is Ronald Popo. Popo. P-O-P-P-O. He is a 65-year-old homeless man. He's a drifter, an alcoholic, and he's been spending most of his time under this bridge. It's the causeway. This goes to the direction that the zombie was heading was towards downtown Miami. So this bridge is relatively close, just a couple miles. And so we're going to be reading this at the time we're watching this video. Now, the, vi- the video is all in uh, security camera and kind of hard to see, but it's filmed by a private security company. And once they're alerted, they start zooming in and shit, but it takes a while for them to know what's going on. So what you're seeing right now in the video is the zombie. And he's got a name. His name is Rudy Eugene, but I'm, I'm just going to call him the zombie. It's easier. It's easier than saying Rudy. <laughs> Rudy! <laughs> this is the zombie walking towards downtown and it's hard to see with this video but he is completely butt naked oh okay butt naked you cannot tell that from the, sh- no. the distance you can kind of tell his flesh tone he, he's an african-american man so he's got you can kind of tell yeah the video is a little grainy but it's very far away too yeah very far away but do you see he stops right here mm-hmm. yeah there's a homeless man 65 year old ronald popo He is sitting there under this bridge and resting or doing whatever he does during his day. And he is confronted by this man. So I'll do the questions if you do the answers. On the day of May 26, 2012, in the vicinity of South Bayshore Drive and 13th Street on the MacArthur Causeway, can you tell me in your own words, speak slowly and clearly, what happened or on about 2 o'clock p.m. that afternoon? Now, keep in mind, this guy has no face, as we'll show you. The hitchhiker returned from the beach, who was in kind of a glad mood f- mode for a while. Then he turned kind of vicious after 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 a minute or two. He started to rip rip me apart. He mashed my face into the uh, sidewalk. My face is all bent, mashed up. My eyes, my eyes got plucked. Oh no! Plucked out. Oh my god! He was strang- <laughs> strangling me in with wrestling holds. At the same time, he was picking my eyes out. Oh my god! Like a vulture. He dude. was strangling me in wrestling holds. So the video, you can see him getting beat. He's actually beaten unconscious. So the video, this is from the Miami Herald, but they fast forward a little bit. He is beating this man. You see the man on the ground? Yeah. And you see him ripping his clothes off. He's dragging him. He's taking his pants off. The zombie is completely naked. Now, I'll put this on talkmore.com. He successfully got the pants off. And let's see. He's still, I guess he dragged him over here. He's still beating him. It is a process. I mean, you see how many cars are going by? There are probably 200 cars that went by. This happened over the course of nearly an hour of this going on. There is the first bicycle rider. Look how close this bicycle rider is. This is what all the comments on YouTube is like. Why would no one stop and help him? Well, you see a fucking guy eating someone's face and tell me if you're going to fucking stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to think this is Resident Evil. Well, I would. I probably wouldn't have even I, gone by i probably would have stopped before, yeah you know what i mean yeah. before getting there and like look he's driving now he's like Err. and this car stops right here this white car uh-huh and then he just says fuck this not for me today anyway go ahead and continue reading this 
For a very short amount of time, I thought he was a good guy, but he just went and turned b- berserk. He apparently didn't have a good day at the beach, and he was coming back. And I guess he took it out took it out on me or something. I don't know. And she's reading him multiple times because he's stuttering. They get yeah. they actually the stenographer writes out all the stuttering. Mm-hmm. The uh, detective says, "Okay, um." The police, of course, uh, came around and freed me from him. You want any more details? Details, or is is that sufficient? Go ahead and read this. The cop asked him about this guy. Who was he? Was he a hitchhiker? Like what? You know, how did he know this guy? And this is what he replies. Well, I heard a car door slam. Then I saw him move around right along the sides of the causeway. So it appeared that he was just being discharged from a car. Now, we know that he wa- he may have been discharged from a car. Someone basically kicked him out. But it was not his own car. His own car was three miles down the road. Okay, so he didn't drive his own car. And in fact, he was walking for at least a couple blocks completely naked. And this is the middle of the day, man. And he's butt naked. And this is a very busy intersection here. I mean, you saw 200 cars go by. And this guy's butt naked. Just walking like a zombie. All right. Okay. When Mr. Eugene got out of the car, that's a zombie. Can you describe how he looked? He was a a bit taller than me, a bit bigger than me. He definitely had size over me. He had hair that was brown and wavy. It looked like a Mohican type of haircut, almost almost like a Mohican. It came out a little spinny curls or something like that, whatever you call them. And he had a whole bunch of those going down the middle of his head. I don't know. I couldn't really assume what, what he was. Did Mr. Eugene have anything in his hand? No, Eugene did not have any type of weapon. He didn't use any weapon on me. He was basically using brute brute force. But before he attacked you, when you saw him getting out of the car, did you have any clothes, any materials, any books? Or did he did he have any clothes, any materials, any books? No. So they did find this guy, Rudy, the zombie. He was carrying a Bible. And some of the pages were actually ripped out and mm-hmm. scattered along with his clothes. I mean, the clothes were found blocks down, you know, just in different places. He was shedding his clothes. Okay. So they thought automatically there's a drug th- thing because when you do drugs like Flocka, a lot of those people get butt naked. That's why you see the naked zombies running because they get too hot. And it's the same with like ecstasy and all that stuff. They drink a lot of water and they shed all their clothes, you know. That's why. Yeah. yeah good to know. That's why I'm sitting here butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Jen says. <laughs> oh, shit. So after he gets out of the car, what happened after that? Oh, he ran. He ran up the walkway. He wanted to just, you know, you know, lounge around for a while. And he was talking for a little bit. And then and then he started to attack me. OK, when he came up to the walkway and you guys were talking, what did he talk about? Basically the beach coming back. What did he say? He didn't like the beach for something. He said he wasn't scoring there or something. He went to the beach to score or something. He's in, he's in, he's flustered about it, I think. Okay. Did he tell you, did he elaborate any further as to what he was doing at the beach? No, no, he didn't. But I heard, I heard someone say he was an acid head. That's what I heard. But that would have been after the incident? Well, certainly. What? Uh, let me see. It just talks about the guy didn't know him. Now, th- he was at the beach, and he was at a certain event at the beach, which we'll get to. I'll get into his whole day here in a second. Okay, so he's telling you that he came from the beach, and he was appeared to be flustered, as you say? For a while, he was acting nice. Then he got a little flustered. He probably remembered some incident on the beach and got got kind of mad about things. What happened after that? He attacked me. He just ripped me to ribbons. He chewed up my face. He plucked out my eyes. Can can you see my face was... You could all see around my eyes where it's it's all... I want to go back and revisit that. He just ripped me to ribbons. That's awful. 
Jesus. I feel so bad for this yeah. person. Fuck. Holy shit. What was he saying when he was assaulting you? You, me, buddy, and nobody else here. I'm gonna gonna kill you or something like that, I guess. Did he say why? No, he just started to scream and he was talking kind of funny talk for a while too. What do you mean funny talk? That I was gonna die. That I was gonna die. He must have been souped up on something. I want to say real quick, the last case that we covered with the frat boy cannibal, he told a lot of people that he was about to die as well, but he had to die to be reborn. That was his exact word, Ah. something like that. It was kind of weird, some similarities there. That's why I wanted to cover Mm. both these cases in tandem, you know? Yeah. Let's continue watching the video. You see the first cop pull up, I think after... 18 minutes the cop pulls up now the cop did say that there was a lot of traffic and you saw him coming down the wrong way there yeah but look at the cop he pulls up and he's walking nonchalantly because he probably got the call of hey there's a some kind of weird zombie or something you know the cop was probably like what you know what is this like a joke are they filming some kind of youtube video so look at him walking but then he's you can see him. You see him step yeah, back. Yep. He's like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? God, can you imagine being the officer on the scene? For this? Oh, my God, yeah. dude. Officer Jose Rivera. He comes across this man. He tells the zombie, Rudy, to stop what he's doing, which is chewing off a homeless man's face. He got 80% of his face chewed off. He tells him to stop, and the officer claims that Rudy looks at him and just growls like a dog. Similar to the last one. Yeah, similar to the last one. Very animalistic. And he shoots him. And this is from uh, one of my sources here. I put all these on talkmore.com. Quote, police said he ordered Eugene to stop, but Eugene just growled at him. So Rivera shot him. When that didn't stop him, Rivera fired three more times. Fucking crazy. He got shot and didn't even think anything of it. So you continue in the video here. There's no sound, but but you see other cops come up too. There's three other cops. And they actually don't have to apprehend this guy like in the last case we did because he's dead. He was shot four times. So he's pretty much dead. Can you imagine being even the paramedics coming up? So this is when the security, they figure out what's going on. Now you can see, what do you see here under the bridge? Legs. You see two people's legs. On the right side here, looking our right side, is the victim, Popo. And you can see him move his legs. Mm -hmm. You see him, he's alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here is the zombie. He's dead, facing on his back. You actually see Popo, the homeless man, Mm -hmm. move around a little bit, which is kind of weird because they, like, censor out his penis. It's not weird. I I know they have to, but, I mean, the guy just lost his face. You know, it's just weird. Anyway, this is, I mean, here's all the EMTs coming up. Can you imagine what they're fucking thinking right now? No. Like all these EMTs. See, he's actually trying to get up. Let me put let, let me put this in perspective right quick before we watch any more of this video. You see him getting up. Yep. All right. How can he see, his eyes were plucked out? Poor thing. I know. Well, you're about to see exactly. Oh boy. I'm going to show you the the I'm oh. going to show you all the pictures right now. I don't now. know. I don't know if I can do it. <sighs> <laughs> we should have we should have done this before we ate. Yeah. Before. Oh, poor man. Do you want to see during or after? You gotta see both. Just do it. Do what? During or after? I mean, you just you're during, gonna do it during, anyway. So. During, do it. Oh, oh my no. god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh the fuck! My god! You can see his eyeball. Yeah. Right here. Here, there's a better picture of his eyeball here. Yeah. I, I look, look at this one, Jen. You can see his ah! eyeball. So 80%, look at his eyeball, he's staring at you, Jim. Oh my God. 
not like you cannot identify <laughs> what Jesus part. Christ. Like, uh-huh. but it, that's not the right location of his eyeball, is no. it? No, I think it's a look at it, Jenny. Uh, no. Oh. No. Oh my God. Okay, go ahead. Go to after. Go to after, please. Oh God. Uh, oh, he Jesus. looks. All right. How the fuck did he survive this? Let me show you his his face. I got uh, a picture of his face. How is he talking after? Oh, this is his uh, face. Uh, that's that's his face right there. That's his uh, face. Oh god. You see is the that eye his... holes. You could put that on like a mask. Is that his mouth? No, that's his eye. Yeah, holes. I know, but is is his eye yeah, down and to his, his beard? Mouth? His, the, his beard is still on the detached so, face. So just I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to think about how to describe this. There is no face, and it looks like where where a mouth should be, the cavity is is wide open, uh, and the, there is no skin whatsoever on the face. You can see his be, his facial hair beard a little bit, but like his eyeball, the only eyeball that you can see. Is down where the the jowls of the cheek would be. Oh yes, yeah, really low. Um, and and you because you can't and you cannot see the other eyeball at all. And the mouth is like wide open. There's no nose. There's no like there is no face. You cannot believe. Well, that is the that face. Some, <laughs> the, it's not there. It's not there. And I cannot believe that someone would sur- be able to survive this. Okay, can you can you, can we move on? I described it. Thank you, Nicole. Let's, let's keep. Okay, this one ain't that bad, Jen. This is after reconstruction. Oh my God! What miracle so, workers are these doctors? This oh. is him after all said and done. This is the after. He is completely blind, and this is what he looks like. Oh, Jesus Christ! I think it's very interesting that he did. He ate eighty percent of his face, and he would have ate one hundred percent of the face if he didn't have a beard. He didn't eat the beard part. As you, Nicole just said, you can actually see the beard right here, Jen, that's attached to the detached face. You can see the beard, Jen, right mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. Jen, the TV's this way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, flipping back through that. This is the crime scene. This is just, Jen, this isn't bad. This is just them, I promise. This is just, oh. so you see the zombie completely dead, shot multiple times. You see one sh- wound coming out the back he is laying with them completely naked they're laying side by side some more of the photos here holy shit so it's crazy because once the paramedics get there not only do they have to like bring this guy to the hospital but they also got to put his face and what do you put it in a bag or it looked like they just wrapped it in some scrubs. You, I don't, I'm not going to show you the picture again, but you saw the scrubs, right? I think yeah. they were scrubs. Here, Nicole, look at it. Scrubs? Yeah. Uh-huh. They just wrap it in scrubs. All right. That's enough I, of that. I mean, pictures. that is a miracle that they <laughs> were able to save his life. Yeah. So he lost both eyes. Yeah, yeah he lost both eyes. And, and nose. He lost his nose and oh, fucking gosh. everything. He, oh. was, he was ripped. To ribbons. Oh, That's exactly, God. he described it right. Ripped to ribbons. Look, so now picture that guy you just saw, and here's the rest of the video of him trying to get up. Oh, my God. This poor man. He's completely blind at this oh point. Oh, my God. Trying to get up. This is the last thing that this man ever saw was this man attacking him. Yeah, that's true. That's the last thing he ever saw. And he said he was nice at first. Oh, poor guy. Would you, would you stop to help? Be honest. Be fucking <sighs> honest, man. Because, I would run away for my own safety. Yes, right? And but that's I, what you should do, because you don't know if this guy's going to try to eat your face. You, but I would have caught, like, I mean, I'm sure they called 911 immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It took unless 18 I was, minutes. Unless I was personally armed, no, I would not try to get... Intervene. Yeah. yeah. Because there's no fucking way when you see something like that happen in front of you. Unless you've got a gun or a knife or something where you can go smash the dude's head in. No, run f- as fast as you can and, and call 911 immediately and try to make sure no one else, like, you know, try to block anyone else from going there. Like if you see another runner, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. These guys are superhuman. They can run. They, they're, they're faster than a speeding bullet. What was it on Superman? <laughs> faster than a speeding bullet. I mean, for real, like these guys will chase you down, man superhuman strength and shit 
I mean, and this was, at first he came up, was completely nice, and all of a sudden you started eating his face. This video is 45 minutes long. It's fast forward, obviously. But almost, I think, for a little over half an hour, he just sat there as Papa was unconscious, and he just sat there gnawing on his face. You know, just gnawing on it. Just for 30 minutes, just gnawing on this guy's face. Mm. Fucking crazy, man. Don't do drugs, man. Right? Right. I guess. However, friends and family said this guy never did any drugs. You know what Not they, possible. You, I don't know. You let me show let me show you the killer. I thought this whole thing was about bath salts. No, well, this was the bath salt video. This is that the, everyone said there was bath salts. Yeah, but they didn't find any bath salts. But there's nothing found in his system besides marijuana. He did smoke weed. Okay. But this is him right here. This is the cannibal killer and his girlfriend. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you would not. You would not think. He does try to look, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, trying to look cool here. If you see these pictures, he's standing in front of his... His blue car. This car was found three miles away from the scene. Trying to look cool, but you look at this guy, and this guy, he he is not a bad dude. I mean, you know, he he's he just looks like a chill dude. No, it looks like, you know like he's living a normal life. Yeah, mm-hmm. normal life. Yeah, that's him. I, I guess as a mugshot. I mean, fuck, I got mugshots out there. This is him and his girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is, I mean, he's even got childhood pictures of him as a baby. Oh. That's the, that's, that kid right there you're looking at is going to grow up to become the Miami zombie. The Causeway cannibal. The bath salt killer. Even though no bath salts were found in his body. So was this not, I'm so confused. Well, let, I'm not saying he wasn't any drugs done but weren't there other like was this then this wasn't the only case of bath salts then that had happened in florida yes this is the case that everyone knows so confused everyone still thinks it's bath salts it was not bath salts all right that it could have been something it's the same shit that happened to the story we just covered i fucking promise you the so similar both really religious both Chewed off faces, didn't swallow them. Both started going downhill. So he prior. had a, he had a, a mental spiral. I don't think it was mental. I don't know. I mean, obviously Both he's dead in now. Florida. But a friend who knew him said that right before the murder, he quote had a secret, hmm. and he was going to tell him what it was. Bobby, his friend, said, "If you want to read this right here, the, his friend's name is Bobby. If you want to read all this." Bobby said that he had something he wanted to tell us, but he didn't know that we would understand. I don't know what it was, Bobby said. Could it been maybe that he is hearing the word of God and and he is becoming holy? I'm just I'm not making fun of it, but that's what that's what or the frat boy cannibal hearing, was hearing. He was hearing demons. Was was hearing, right? And seeing? I think this is something I think this is some drug. I think this is some fucking shit that People are handing out. If you want to read this too, all this stuff. This is from Bobby. Bobby said, I saw the video and that's not Rudy. Physically it was Rudy, but mentally that was not Rudy. His last words to me were that he wanted to get his life right and that he wanted to get closer to God, Bobby said, and he wanted to stop smoking pot. After doing this story in the last one, I'm done smoking pot too. Fuck that. (laughs) Holy shit, man. I'm done with that shit. There was no drugs found in the system. Lab tests detected only marijuana in his system, not even alcohol. His family, his girlfriend, his friends said he didn't even drink. He smoked pot what? once every once in a while. In fact, he was at a festival where there was a lot of marijuana around, which we'll get to in a second. So it could have even been secondhand. He didn't take any prescription drugs, no adulterants, like I said, and uh, two forens- two forensic toxicology labs separate forensic toxicology labs for the government tested him and post-mortem tested his autopsy and his blood nothing not a and they they did every test known to fucking man every drug i'm talking about 
they probably spent a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars testing this shit. Every drug, every chemical, everything, not one thing other than straight THC marijuana was found in the system. I'm Nothing. I'm so mm. puzzled why no, this would be the no other infamous for bath salts. Then no, no other. See, bath salts would bath salts actually leave a long trace in your system. If he would have did bath salts, it would have been there, and it would have been extremely prevalent. Nothing, not any chemicals that are any different from what you and I have in our blood. It was just THC a little bit, and that THC is not going to make you chew faces off. Well, I feel like bath salts were a thing in 2012. Like, maybe, like there was a trend where people were doing something with bath salts. Maybe they just uh, like attributed it to this incident. I guess. I don't know, but. My, I never did bath salts, but with that fucking spice, never to fuck again, man. That shit is goddamn scary as fuck. It's nothing but paranoia. It's nothing like getting high, man. It's it's fucking scary as shit, man. I don't know what the fuck it was. Anyway. It does not seem appealing at all. Oh, fuck no. It's terrible. Because we have, the, the reason that marijuana affects us is because we have THC receptors in our body. The theory is that humans gain consciousness as we were monkeys, if you believe in evolution, because we came across some fucking weed and we ate the weed. I thought it was mushrooms. Well, it could be mushrooms, but I'm telling you, we have we're like the only mammal with THC receptors in our body. Now, it could have been drugs. Dr. Bruce Goldberger, a professor at toxicology at the University of Florida, which if I wanted to study toxicology, the first place I'm going to apply to is Florida. <laughs> Fucking shit. And uh, it's interesting. Like, it, it's in, I think I just want to mention how, you know, his friends were saying it was so out of character. He didn't drink. He didn't, you know, occasionally smoked marijuana. It makes you think that if this was not a mental issue that he was not necessarily taking willingly a recreational drugs, but perhaps he was drugged. Yes. That is the thing. That is what's scary. That's what it's got. Like, honestly, that's what it kind of has to be. Unless, it, yeah. unless he had a sudden mental breakdown. People were mm-hmm. scared of after this and probably even still even accepting business cards from people. I don't know if you mm. saw in the last case, he has it on there where he was accepting business cards from people because he, thought he was God and wanted to reach out to these people and help them. Oh, the last case you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It could have people. I mean, dude, not everyone out there is a good person. They could be literally testing these drugs. Well, you know what? It was, this kind of reminds me of that, um, you know, PSA that you shared about, um, fentanyl and the cop that was like literally just, (sighs) it was in the air particles and he collapsed and OD'd. No, he OD'd like four times. It it almost died. Like, and that was just from it being in the air particles. So it's certainly possible that, yeah, someone, you know, shake, shook someone's hand or like it was in the air and he Mm -hmm. breathed it in and Mm -hmm. it reacted to him and like, the fuck that's terrifying yeah fuck yeah it's goddamn terrifying rule number one don't move to florida right or was yeah, that rule number two <laughs> that was rule number maybe two. that's maybe we need a uh, suddenly finally a new rule yeah dr bruce goldberger a professor at toxicology at the university of florida says quote the problem today is that there is an almost infinite number of chemical substances out there that can trigger unusual behavior He says it is nearly impossible to keep pace with new formations of synthetic drugs. And like I said, I did that synthetic drug and that shit was not good, man. Mm. I mean, not good. I mean, that was not good, man. Young, his younger brother, Charles said, quote, there's no, there's no answer for it. Not really. Anyone who knew him knows this wasn't the person we knew him to be. Whatever triggered him, there is no answer for this. End quote. Now, let me talk about the day of. The day of, he leaves his girlfriend's house at 2 a.m. Saturday, Saturday night. So this is Sunday when this happens. He leaves his girlfriend's house at 2 a.m. Saturday night. He's behaving oddly. He's actually searching through her panty drawer and... 
I don't, I mean, she, she describes it as him just rifling through like her underwear or something like that. And then he just bolts. He hmm. leaves. In the morning of May 26, the murder day, he drives to South Beach. He drives his own car. Now, the girlfriend and the friends think that this was something that happened over the period of a week. So he was getting different. Hmm. The girlfriend, she was on Dr. Phil and she honestly believes that he was a different person. Almost like a, almost like an alien fucking switcheroo there, man. Hmm. A doppelganger type of shit. He was always sweet to me. Um, I understand that the public view, view him in a different light, but that's not who I know. Um, he was very sweet and very affectionate to me and my children. So I, I don't know of uh, him being ever aggressive or anything to me. So, you know, completely fucking different, but very similar to the last case. Yeah, exactly. So he actually drove down to this which is Black Beach Week, also known as Urban Beach Week. So it's just a beach party, uh, mostly I'd imagine for uh, African American, you know, people that like music and want to hang out at the beach. We have something similar here in South Carolina called Black Beat or called Black Bike Week. Oh. So you, yeah, so I, you Up in ha- Myrtle Beach, right? Yeah, Myrtle Beach. So you have uh, Bike Week, which is like Harley Davidsons and stuff. And Black Bike Week, which is the week after. I mean, it's not like all, all black people, obviously. I mean, it's everyone, but it's the they're like crotch rockets, right? They're not Harleys. They're the street motorcycles. You know what I'm saying? And we, I actually used, I actually used to work with that in law enforcement, helping them control, like patrol those. And I'm telling you, man, those th- those things would end up. People would be killing each other over there. Stupid stuff. People get crazy. So what I'm trying to say is it may it's a possibility that somewhere in this mass of people, he smoked something or somebody put something in his drink or whatever. And that Mm -hmm. our toxicology test couldn't find it because we haven't developed a test for whatever chemical or whatever. I'm sure they got his blood in vials now and they probably test it. I'd imagine quite frequently when new things come available. Mm. So he leaves his girlfriend's house. He he's behaving oddly in the morning of May 26. He drives to South Beach for Urban Beach Week. He parks his car, the car you saw in the photo of him, near 10th and Alton Road. He couldn't start the car after he leaves the beach. So he leaves the beach. He goes back to his car. And a CCTV camera caught him for 30, 40 minutes walking around the car. I couldn't see where he was trying to fix the car, but they said the car wouldn't start, which is kind of weird. There was also five bottles of water in the car. So he stopped somewhere or did something. That's an unusual amount of water. Were they all empty bottles? I I couldn't find that, but... He ends up walking three and a half miles and Ronald Popo, the guy, said he hears a car door slam. I'd believe it. I believe he was picked up by somebody and then dropped off, Mm -hmm. you know, or kicked out or something. I mean, you know, maybe. I I don't know. You you would think, though, that if if someone did pick him up, they would have come forward as or we, we would have gotten that information as part of the investigation already. You know? Well, they... Maybe not, but I mean, I don't know, man. So he walks around his car three and a half miles later. He is at under the bridge causeway bridge and he's naked before the attack. This is the midday sun. He's actually facing the sun. So I was imagining like you're walking in the desert and you know how like you see the movies and they're like. Kind of throw in their mm-hmm. whatever. They're peeling their peeling their sh- yeah. shit off. It's like ah, water kind of shit. That is kind of what it it reminded me of of that shit right there. Now he was religious, and his mom actually considers him a quote church boy. He actually had a Bible with him. It came out that Ronald Popo. I saw this somewhere. I didn't see this in his interview, so it may be fabricated but at one point rudy the zombie blamed ronald popov the victim of stealing his bible but the bible was in his hand the whole time 
And number one, that's crazy. Wh- number one, where's he fucking going? He's going to downtown. Okay. And he's got a Bible in his hand. What, why is he carrying a Bible? I, I feel like maybe, I, I don't know. Anyway, his girlfriend, Yovanka Bryant, said that they would often read the Bible and the Quran together. You know, both of them. Mm-hmm. And every morning they would watch religious television. I find hmm. it coincidental, man, that both cases involve religion. I don't know. Does anybody else? May, maybe it's just coincidence. To me, it's almost like it's even more puzzling just the fact that if it was clear that it was an, um, like he wasn't, they weren't, he wasn't doing it because he was obvious, like a terrible human mm-hmm. being. You know, it was something mentally snapped or he took a drug, but otherwise like lived a Good life. Yeah. You know? Good life. This guy was young. He's 31 years old. I know. The other kid was 21. Tw- 25. Right. The other kid was 25. Right. That ain't no good life. That's just starting. Well, no. I mean, he, like, it wasn't like the, the kid wasn't getting himself into trouble. He wasn't. Both of them seem to have been good people. And, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, it's not like he was, He you know, he was a, a terrible human being. You know, it sounds like he was. Trying to do good things and, and, you know, study the Bible with his girlfriend and, you know, uh, like that. Those are all, I don't know. I just don't see the, what what could have happened? What I'm really curious about is the week before where it seemed like there was a totally different person. Because that's also very similar. You know, the other, the other case that we covered, he had a history of mental issues, but in la- had like a downward spiral over two weeks. Well, this case is different too because the religion like he wasn't just studying the bible he was also studying the quran right which means just like the last kid that we talked about like they're trying to learn or trying to be insightful on multiple religions which is nothing wrong with that, but fuck, that's a coincidence that both of these guys did that. Well, it could have been like maybe one of their family members was Muslim or maybe one of them yeah. was Muslim. You are the girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah. I like that's that more too. more likely. Yeah. But the religion thing did get me because, I mean, fucking crazy. Anyway, about the bath salts incident. Bobby, the friend of his, said, quote, it had to be some sort of drug that somebody must have slipped on him because w- Rudy wouldn't so much as pop a Tylenol. He said wow. he didn't take alcohol and he barely smoked weed. His girlfriend, they've been dating forever. She's only seen him smoke a joint one time. This one, this guy you're looking at, his own mother calls him a church boy. It's definitely puzzling. Yeah. Fuck yes. <laughs> And he fucking, I mean, obviously he's not, I mean, dude, you do not premeditate eating someone's face off. You're just sitting there for 30 minutes. Like no one's that fucked in the head to think of that. This is, this is something that is pulling at your very, you know, bestial, archaic sense of humanity, you know, back when we were fucking hopping from tree to tree and fighting for survival and shit. Very very just primal primal man isn't it crazy <laughs> holy shit holy fuck man it's nuts anyway go see the talk if you want to throw up <laughs> I mean, yeah that those photos are not for the fan those yes, photos no. are fucking nuts man and i'll put them on there if you guys want to fucking seriously throw up go see them they're they're fucking bad dude i mean you can see the guy's eyeball yeah <laughs> No, it's, fucking, it's really sad. Holy shit, man. Ripped to ribbons. Holy fuck. Anyway, that's the story. That's the So why So if, why did he do it? Nobody fucking knows. No, no, no. Um what was the person testifying for? There was no one to try. I think he was just They just wanted it, to figure out what the fuck like, happened. It was was it just like they, him them getting his testimony? Yeah, they wanted to figure out I didn't out. know if they I was trying to see if that was like a they were in a court or Dude, something. Dude, you want to see something fucked? This guy, uh, this is the um, surviving victim. He's got a video of himself playing guitar. Now he, I mean, obviously oh, he's. Oh no! I'll get too upset. He's uh, he says he's very grateful, and I believe he is. But and I'm pretty sure he's taken care of. 
now he's not homeless on the street he wouldn't be able to function you know they're not going to let um let a victim like that you know just kind of rot away but still i mean jesus listen to this shit fucking a homeless man whose face was chewed off in a horrifying attack in miami last year has learned to play guitar as he continues to receive treatment for his injuries. Oh my God, look at it. For contributing and helping out. People in my predicament need to be helped out. Jesus Christ. And I'm sure there's other, other people also that have the same, same type of... I want to say real quick, he is grateful and... Um, just a little bit about him. I did a little bit of uh, background research just real quick on him because most people would just be like, there's just some homeless guy. This is him in his high school days. He actually went to a very prestigious high school. So I, I believe he became homeless because he developed schizophrenia. Mm. This is from the New York Daily News right here. Victim of Miami zombie attack graduated from Manhattan's Stuyvesant High School. And apparently he was super smart. He was in the Latin club and worked in the guidance office. And then his life just hit the skids. His family didn't know he was even alive for Mm. the last 30 years until the story came out. I mean, this guy, one of his one of his peers said he was a genius. Quote, the sad reality is that there are many brilliant people who became who become schizophrenic and end up on the streets. That's what his classmate said. Yeah. And that classmate is a, a plastic surgeon in Miami. Mm. The other homeless people said that he didn't even seem like he he meant to be there. He was very well educated and he was very friendly. Mm. So just a little bit about him. I mean, sucks, but, you know. So that's it, man. I guess he's happy to be alive, which is good, but fuck, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? That's all I got on this. I'm just so puzzled about the whole bath salt thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Fuck me. I thought it was all bath salts all the way around, even when I started the 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 frat boy cannibal. I thought it was bath salts, some kind of flocka bullshit, nothing, man. I mean, they tested for all that flocka, bath salts, X, all that shit they tested for. PCP, angel fucking dust, you know, whatever, mushrooms. I mean, every chemical known to man they fucking tested for. So what they're looking at now is someone combining these nested adulterant chemicals. I don't really know how chemistry works, but combining all this shit and making new synthetic fucking... You know, shit out there, man. It's a Fucking mystery. Kim mm-hmm. Jong Un's trying to take us down through zombie attacks. Maybe. I don't know. I hope you guys like that. That's crazy. We're gonna wrap yep. it up. It's Friday. I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Until next week, my name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. And good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>